Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the endless choices in music making? From picking instruments, deciding on VSTs and software, should I use a laptop or desktop computer, headphones, monitors, speakers, and that's just the setup. Once you actually get into music making, there's chord progressions, time signatures, samples and sample libraries, melody writing, B sections, arrangements, mixing, mastering, and the list continues. Exhausting, right? I recently took a well-intentioned break. My plan was to take two weeks off, get back to it and hit the ground running. But when the time came, I ended up avoiding it because I wasn't quite ready for all of that. Despite my well-intentioned efforts to have a break and embrace my time off, the prospect of picking things up seemed more and more daunting. There's a video that I always come back to from pianist and composer Bill Evans, where he talks about the creative process. It is true of any subject that the person that succeeds in anything has the realistic viewpoint at the beginning and knowing that the uh, the problem is large and that he has to take it a step at a time and he has to enjoy the step-by-step -step learning procedure. This really hits home for me, especially when I'm feeling swamped by too many choices. He's basically saying that success comes from tackling big challenges one step at a time and actually enjoying the process of taking it step by step. Sounds simple enough, right? But maybe not in practice. And this idea is super relevant for producers and anyone making music. It's like saying, hey, it's okay to limit yourself just to a few tools or ideas. This way, you're not getting overwhelmed by trying to do it all at once. Instead, you can focus on enjoying each little step. It's a reminder that sometimes, by putting up boundaries, we can actually open up more room for creativity and fun in what we're doing. So let's narrow our focus to deal with fewer decisions and see if it can unlock and spark something new. Cool, so I'm starting with drums. I've taken this hi-hat loop, which I guess in a way is a limitation, and I could have used a full drum loop, but I was kind of just feeling going through my samples and hearing some kicks and snares that I like the sound of. I'm kind of staying within my comfort zone of tempo as well, which I think is cool, especially as I'm getting back into the swing of things. I'm always starting my tracks with uh, minor chords or dominant sus chords, and rarely I start in like a major sort of tonality, and I think that that could be quite a cool thing to explore today, so I'm gonna start exploring major chords and see if I can use that to come up with something fresh. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of cool. Nah. So we kind of got like a F major to B flat major, E flat major to D flat major. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we can work with that. I want to focus the session today around as few instruments as possible. So I'm going to stay within my comfort zone to an extent, jump over on the piano and see if I can come up with a melody and develop those chords further. I like that. It's hard to sing. <laughs> uh, maybe it's something different the second time around. Let's try and work this out without the drums for a minute. Because I'm kind of thinking F major 7, E flat major 7. And I'm thinking like something to connect the loop, or I don't know, to take it somewhere slightly different. And then I think like that C7 sus is a really nice sound there. Something like that could be really cool. C7 sus, A7 altered, D7 altered. Three, four. I don't know what 
that was. Yeah, I'm really liking that. I'm wondering whether I could kind of take that last bit, the C7 sus, and maybe take it somewhere slightly different. I don't know. Let's see. But away, but up. Forgive my singing. Also, that's a bit of a limitation of mine, but you know, I like to audiate and kind of use my voice to guide, especially melodies. Um, so yeah, leaning into another limitation there. Also, we kind of veered away from like the major chords, but what's interesting to notice is that just by superimposing the idea of let's start with using and exploring the color and texture of major chords, it kind of births something slightly different to what I would usually make. So that's really nice. But yeah, let's see if we can connect this, so. Yeah, they're nice chords. Let's see if we can sort of develop that further a little bit. I also like using that E flat seven dominant chord with like the sharp 11, <laughs> without getting too nerdy about it, to take us there. I mean, it could be like an F7 to take us to that B flat minor, but I don't know. Yeah, let's switch it up and use like a four dominant. Slightly different, but it sounds cool to me. Cool, let's jam around that. Cool, I think there's something there. Let's see what we've managed to capture. Sounding kind of cool. Oh yeah, by the way, I include all the chords over on my Patreon. So if you hear some of the chords that I'm talking about and you're thinking, what's going on? Um, yeah, check out my Patreon where I share resources and breakdowns and other insights to help you learn these chords as well. So this is missing some low end. I've been using Retrograde Bass by Telotone Audio for a little while. I've still not moved off it, so here we go. Something like that's nice. Ah, not quite. Nice. That's a cool opener. Yeah, and so then the chords change here. Cool, and then that can repeat. Yeah, that's nice. That might do for now. Just following the root notes. I didn't want to play anything too complicated and in my mind I thought, oh, I'm just going to try and play the root notes, especially in this section, at least for now anyway. And that's a limitation that just enabled me to get it done, so that's cool. I just want to process the drums a little bit. Things are kind of standing out a bit. That's without. Yep, sounding cool. And I've been loving this plugin Radiator by Sound Toys. I think the tone's really nice. Yeah, that'll do for now on the drums. It's nice. Should the bass follow the kick or the piano? Maybe the kick. Sounds a bit 
messy. Don't know. We'll leave it for now. Back to the A. I really like how natural that B section sounded. Nice. So I'm gonna wrap up the project today. I've been at this for an hour, which isn't long at all. And you know what? It felt really refreshing to set some limitations. I had an hour, so that's a limiting factor. I said to myself that I was gonna use major chords, which is something that I don't ordinarily do. And as a result, the sound is kind of shaped and the color is slightly different to the kind of music I'd usually make, which is really lovely. And I've limited the number of instruments that I've used. I've got drums, piano, and bass, which is sounding pretty good together. So I'm gonna to save this project and maybe revisit it another day. But for now, a big thank you. This session has been really refreshing and I hope that you might get something from this as well. If you're interested in learning the chords to this track and some of my other ones, do consider joining over on Patreon. We're building a really lovely community there and it really makes a massive difference to this channel. Big thank you as always and I'll catch you in the next video.